me. I can't get it. <sighs> I'm just trying to catch these goalposts that keep moving. Yeah. So YouTube team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video. And in this video, man, same old story, same old stuff. Y'all already know the vibes. The goalposts continue to be shifted. They continue to be moved. They continue to be altered. They continue to be changed. They just continue not to stay the same and not to be in the same position when it comes to Lamar Jackson. Before we get into this, team, keep it clean. I love y'all. Special shout out to all the team, keep it clean patrons. And I saw a lot of questions from subscribers, from the team, keep it clean patrons. So we will be getting to those very, very soon. I appreciate y'all. Thank you all who came through on the live stream last night. We had a lot of fun, a lot of stress, but a lot of fun. And shout out to anybody that actually got to go to the game and were there live and stayed through the entirety of the game. Kudos to you. So... Of course, last night, the Ravens and Lamar Jackson, they came back from being down by 19. Lamar Jackson's guy ended up throwing for 442 yards, four touchdowns, and had like an 86 completion percentage, which is crazy. It's insane. It just is wild. And especially to, to do that from how the game started, if, if you saw how that game started and how that game was going through the first quarter, you'd be like, ooh, yikes. Through the second quarter, you'd be like, ooh, yikes. Through the third quarter, you'd be like, ooh, yikes. But then at the, late in the third quarter and in the fourth quarter, that's when the Ravens, they just start picking it up. And shout out to Wild and Out because the Ravens, they picked up and killed it. Literally. And they never looked back. That up-tempo offense, they just started moving. But despite all of that, it just, it, it wasn't good enough for some people. Now, you know, Twitter is a very dangerous place. It's a very dangerous place to be at. You got to tread lightly when you go to Twitter. You got to be very careful and very cautious of where you go when you're in the land of Twitter. And today, it was no different. I just happened to be scrolling. Just happened to be checking some stuff out. And I, I entered into Brown's Twitter. And this is what I saw. So, the original tweet was from a guy named Daryl Ruder. Uh, he said, that comeback orchestrated by Lamar Jackson is exactly the type of elite play Browns fans want to see from Baker Mayfield with games on the line. That's the next level for six, Baker Mayfield, to get to. So, here we go. This, was, this is where it all started. So, this guy... Who responded to him I just let him remain nameless he said if it wasn't for a blocked field goal and a missed field goal the, the Colts win so wouldn't it be more elite to run up the score on the first half and win in the fourth with a sound running game and not have to rely on the above failed attempts so what he was saying is that the Ravens they should run up the score it would be more elite if the Ravens were to run up the score and then later on in the game, just close it out with a sound running game. That would be a more elite style. But wait a minute. If I recall, the Ravens used to do that kind of stuff. They used to do that kind of stuff like every week. And then people would say, oh, these dudes can't play from behind. <laughs> these dudes are terrible. They can't come back from being down. They're so used to, being, to playing with the score lit up. And they're so used to being so far ahead of these other teams that they cannot come back. They're not built to come back. Remember, remember hearing that so many times? Oh, Ravens, are dead. this is not a team to, that's built to play from behind. Remember that? I do. I know y'all do too. But now this guy is saying, since the Ravens came back, that's not elite. They should have been up, and they should have been up big. Really? Like, <laughs> come, come on now. All right, so then somebody else. Somebody else. They followed that up. And let's, let's listen to what they followed it up with. They said, don't forget, the Colts only had three cornerbacks left. Lamar was not doing anything until the Colts had their third string secondary in. And I was like, hold up. That just made me think. 
Did we? Oh, where are we in? We in week five, right? So in order to get to week five, we have to go through weeks one through four. But check this. It's 2021. Last year, the pandemic was a lot crazier than it is right now. So there was something that we didn't have last year. It was called a preseason. So this year we had a preseason. So in, we're in week five. In order to get to week five, we had to go through weeks one through four. But in order to get to weeks one through four, we had to go through the preseason. And what are they doing in the preseason? These teams start off with 90 men on their roster. 90 men. And it's already hard enough for those people to make just a 90 man roster alone. But then, but then these teams have to pick the best of the best. Only 1% of people even make it in the NFL. So these teams, they had to pick from the best of the best to go from 90 to 53 men. So whether it's a first string player, a second string player, a third string player, a fourth string player, a fifth, whatever. These are the best of the best in the world. In not just on a t the best of the best in the world. They made it in the NFL and you know how hard that is. But again, when it comes to Lamar Jackson and this Ravens offense, the goalposts will always continue to be moved. And it's going to be something that is never going to stop. And it, again, like I said, you just as a Ravens fan, you got to be used to it. Now, there's some fans that will give credit where credit is due and you got to appreciate them. I love it. I love it. I like myself to give credit where credit is due. I don't care if it's a Browns player still. Y'all know, I already, already know I ain't like that. If a player plays good, if a team plays good, give them their credit. They deserve it. If they do something well, let's call it out. If they do something bad, let's call it out both ways. But not everybody can do that. And not everybody is willing to do that, which is unfortunate. It just, I feel like that, that takes away from how you view the game. Because if you view the game as, just say, for instance, like some of these Browns fans, not all Browns fans are like that, but just these two specifically I'm speaking of. If you view the game like them, then you're only going to view it, well, okay, Browns are the best team in the world, and that's it. Nobody else deserves any credit. Nobody else plays good. Nobody else does anything. Because I guarantee you, if Baker Mayfield did what Lamar Jackson did last night, I guarantee you they will say, oh, man, that boy Baker got hot. Oh, man, that boy Baker's cold. Oh, man, that boy Baker, that's the guy. That's our guy. And Baker's nice. I like Baker Mayfield. He's nice. Good quarterback. And if that, that would have happened, I would have said the same thing. But a lot of people, just because it's not their own, their own team, that's not the team that they root for, then they're like, oh, man, nah, it ain't nothing. But a lot of people, because it's Lamar Jackson, then they're like, oh, no. It wasn't even all that. It wasn't even impressive. It was against third stringers. He should have been blowing that, that team out. That's what, that's what elite really is. So... Y'all just keep on watching for them goalposts to continue to go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And while those goalposts keep moving, watch Lamar's game keep rising. We out. Shout out to Graven.